Good morning. morning. Welcome to Ignite. If you're new with us, just want to say it's an honor and privilege that you decided to join us this morning. We are in week number two of The Walking Dead. If you missed it last week, last week the title of the message was Contaminated, and it was basically how uh, how do we uh, love contaminated people. Um, We realize and we discuss that we're all contaminated, that we're all carriers of that. And uh, until we realize that we're jacked up too, we'll never be able to love other contaminated people. Today, what I want to talk to you about is the title of today's message is Antivirus. Um, We're going to be talking about forgiveness today, and it's something that uh, eh, forgiveness goes in a a couple different forms, at least in my life. Uh, Forgiveness... It's easy for me to grasp whenever I, I look at it in terms of God forgiving me. Um, I like that. I, it's easy for me to process. It's easy for me to digest. I'm thankful for that. Um, it, it's whenever we have to start forgiving other people that it's a little more difficult to digest. And uh, it, it seems to... Um, we, do, we, do, we don't grasp that concept very well. I mean, it's very evident in today's society that uh, we are not a society or a culture. Uh, our ability or willingness to forgive other people is deteriorating rapidly as a society and as a culture. Um, we, we get mad at other people for crazy things, and we hold it against them um, Pretty much forever, we, we have this innate ability to hate other people that we've never even met. If you're on Facebook, you're, you're one of these people, you know? Uh, it's, uh, it, I, you'll see a story about, um, you know, somebody threw puppies off of a bridge or something in, in North Carolina, and you've never met this person, but you hate them, you know? Uh, it's like, this, this guy literally deserves to burn in hell, you know, is what the comments and all this kind of stuff says, and... And it's crazy, uh, our willingness and our quickness to pick up other people's offenses and, and uh, just unforgiveness is everywhere. Well, we, we must make choices in life. Life is all about a series of choices that we make. There's, and there's no choice greater than the one uh, whether or not we decide if we're going to follow Jesus or not. Um, but I think that one of the greatest choices that we have to continue to make is, is whether or not we're going to choose forgiveness or bitterness in life. Uh, because life happens all the time. And, you know, I don't want to, as we go through today's message, I want to navigate it carefully uh, with your feelings in consideration of knowing, because there's some people that's been through some very real things. Um, Some very big injustices in life have occurred to a lot of people. Some of you have been physically abused or sexually abused or or abandoned or, you know, um, cheated on or whatever. You know, everybody has their story, and every story matters. Um, And so sometimes we are victims of other people and their their neglect and um, just cruel. You know, sometimes life can just be cruel, um, but we're going to focus today on, you know, what Jesus says about forgiving, and um, I mean, you know, out of the gate, I'm going to ask for your guys' forgiveness, because if you were with us last week, I said last week, this is probably the, you know, last week, I prefaced it by saying this is probably the most difficult message out of the whole series, the rest of them are going to be awesome, I lied. Um <laughs> Today is, is equally as difficult, you know. It's one of these gut check moments, which seems to be a recurring theme around here. And uh, it's crazy in the, how Jesus is changing us all from the inside out on a weekly basis. I think it's, it's crazy. Um, uh, walking dead people, they're, they're uh, you know, bitter people. They're literally walking dead people. They're, they're rotting from the inside out. They're, they, they have interior rot going on, and they are... Are, they are fixated. They're fixated on destroying other people's lives. That's what bitterness will do to you. It'll rot you from the inside out. It'll, it'll fixate. It'll cause you to fixate on destroying other people. Um, 
It's, it's a disease, it's a sickness, and so we need an antivirus for that. Um, whenever you, you're getting sick, you can feel that. This time of year, the flu's going around and all this kind of stuff. And I've had the flu a couple times in my life, and let me tell you something. I don't need a doctor to tell me that I've got the stinking flu. I mean, you, you know that you have the flu because you feel feel like crap and like like a semi has just hit you at three or four times you know and you just ugh. and you know what the funny thing or, or the crazy thing about like being sick like that um, other people around you can tell that you're sick too um, I you, know, you see somebody coming in and man they just I mean, they look like death warmed over, you know? Um, and so you're just like, I, I don't know. I'm not the, I, I don't want to go up and hug people with the flu. I'm like, you, you look like hell, and there's no way that I want to look like that. And so uh, I'm going to stay very far away from you, you know? Um, other people can tell that, that you have the flu. Bitterness is the same way, you know? Um, bitterness, you can feel that. You can feel it creeping up inside of you. You can, um, you can feel bitterness. You can feel the anger. You can feel the rage. You can feel the anxiousness. And you know what? Other people can tell that too about you. Um, you don't have to run around with a sign around your neck saying, I'm bitter. People know that you're bitter. <laughs> people, that's why they're avoiding you like you're, like you're sick. Um, and so it, it's one of those things in life that we've really got to process this well, um, I believe, to become better. Um, so th- we're going to spend some time in Matthew chapter 18 today, and uh, we're going to go through one of the parables that Jesus is telling. Uh, I, love, I love how Jesus taught through parables. Um, parables had a couple different reasons. I believe. Uh, see, Jesus would get asked specific questions, and then he'd go off into a story. And it, for two reasons, I really believe. Uh, uh, one, for the, the people who were really seeking the truth and, and the knowledge from him and was a follower, uh, it would just have more significant meanings. You know, here we are 2,000 years later and going, ah, that's. Uh, Jesus meant this whenever he said that, and you know it, it means something new to you. Like I've read the Bible a few times, and each time, and I've read lots of scripture several times. And every time that I read scripture, it means something new, and it reveals something else. And and so I believe that Jesus spoke in stories like that to help reveal his character and stuff. And I also believe that on the flip side of the coin, that he, he spoke in parables to because uh, he had real opposition. And, uh, you know, the people who were totally opposed to Jesus, it just didn't make any sense to them. They're like, this guy's stinking crazy, you know. We're trying to nail him down on these questions, and he's talking about, you know, some farmer or something, you know, and seeds and, and weird stuff like that. And so, uh, which, which kind of brings it all back to, hey, the Bible is actually does know what it's talking about, because then you read things like, you know, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who believe, it's the eternal life, it's power, you know, in that. And so uh, I love it when Jesus is, uh, whenever he's trying to explain whether it's the kingdom of heaven or in this instance about forgiveness, uh, he explains through stories and parables. And so he just got done talking uh, to the disciples about, uh, they wanted to know how to deal with difficult people. How, how do you deal? He just got done talking, teaching them about how you deal with people who sin against you. He talks about going to your brother face to face and then, you know, that whole process. And so this is directly after that. So that's what they'd been learning on. It's chapter 18, starting in verse 21. It says, then Peter came to Jesus and he asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Very straightforward question, I think. Um, and then Peter says, seven times? Ask, uh, follows the question by another question. Uh, so the reason Peter's saying this is that he's not being like cocky or arrogant, I don't believe. He is actually 
Um, you know, Jesus was his rabbi, and so rabbinical law it says that what they've been taught is that if somebody sins against you, you must forgive them three times. And so Peter is really curious because the law says that they've been they've been taught since the day they were born that you forgive people three times. And so Peter's saying. Hey, Jesus, uh, I know you're raising the stakes in every area of life, and so I'm just going to take a stab at this because I'm your best student. Um, so how many times should I forgive somebody? Seven times? I mean, that's, that's more than twice than, than what I've been taught to. And Jesus says, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. And there's a lot of people in the room right now going, aren't you? What's the answer? It's, it's a lot, okay? How about that? It's a bunch. Um, it, so that was the answer to Peter's question. Peter's like, crap, I always fail at this. Do you ever feel like that with Jesus? Like, you, you ask Jesus what you should do, and then, I don't know, it's like the Holy Spirit always guides me and goes, yeah, you just reminded me how bad I suck, you know? It's like, okay. All right, so and then Jesus goes into the story. He says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. So if the king was a bank, he just called all the notes due. Just going into the story. He says, in the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. A lot of money. More money than he could possibly pay back. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. And whenever I read this, I go, well, that kind of sucks. Horrible. But this is the part of the story that we got to realize, that's kind of justice. But young people, listen to me. I, I don't care what... TV or whoever it tells you, if you, there's a price to be paid for everything that you do in life. You can never escape the payment. Something has to be paid. If you borrow something, you got to bring it back. There's right, and there's, if you borrow money, guess what? You must pay it back. A lot of times with interest, incredible amounts of it, and, and until you until your debt is paid off, you're a, a slave or a, you're on the opposite side of the track. You're, you're not a friend. You're an employee or a slave to the master. And so he couldn't pay it. And so the, you know, this king says, all right, I'm going to sell you, your wife, your kids, even your, the ones you like, um, you know, your, your donkeys, your dogs, your cats. We're, we're selling it all because you owe millions. And you can't pay it. So this is the way we're going to handle these debts. Sounds crazy, sounds harsh, but it is just. He couldn't pay, so uh, yeah, his master ordered to pay the debt. But the man, he, he fell before his master, the king, and he begged him, please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Just begging him. Please don't sell my wife. I love her. Don't do that. And his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant. So he didn't go to a, another king, or he didn't go to somebody who was beneath him. He went to another person who was on the exact same playing level, and the exact same field as him. And this is what he did. He... Uh, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. Now, reading this today, I'm going, a few thousand dollars, listen to me, that's a lot of money. To me, a few thousand dollars, it seems like a lot of money. Um, but a few thousand dollars is what I would consider a manageable debt. It's something that could be worked off and, and paid off. It's something that's... It's manageable. It's not millions. If somebody told you you owed tens of millions of dollars, you'd be like, good luck. 
But if somebody tells you you owed a few thousand dollars, then, I mean, that's, you can work that off. So we have an unmanageable debt, and then you have a manageable debt. Um, so this guy, he, he says he grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. He started choking this guy. Just grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, there's people standing around and people saw this. It was like, whoa, they were very upset. And so they went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Crazy story that Jesus is telling here. It brings me to uh, point number one, if you're taking notes. Unforgiveness changes us and impacts everyone around us. Unforgiveness, it changes us and it impacts everyone around us. See how it it changed this guy in the, in the walking dead when the virus takes over. They call it not changing. They call it turning. These people turn. And so unforgiveness, it, it rots you. And bitterness, it, it rots you from the inside out. And it, and it does a few things. It, it causes you to withhold love. It causes you to stop trusting. And it causes you to constantly want to keep score with everybody else. If you harbor unforgiveness in your heart, it changes you, and it just impacts everybody. So this can be played out on a number of theaters in our life. Uh, let's just look at marriages. So if you had a marriage that failed in the past, and and it could have been for some very serious, I mean, maybe there was some abuse going on. Maybe there was some cheating going on and lies and fraud and all this kind of stuff. Very real reason. But if you, if you harbor that bitterness and there's no forgiveness moving forward, um, as you go into your next season, if you, as you, a lot of times people get remarried and you'll go into another relationship, it'll, it'll cause you to withhold love at times. Maybe as manipulation or whatever. It'll definitely cause you to, to not fully trust. And it'll, it'll cause you to always keep score. It'll cause you to freak out and manipulate. You know, like everything is good until you did this. And it's not just marriages. Maybe it's friendships. Maybe you've been done, done wrong by somebody in the past. No matter who it is. You know, I'm good with you. But if I ever see this out of you, I'm going to do one of three things. Whenever you harbor resentment and unforgiveness, you, you, you react in, in one of three ways. You either fight, or you run, or you start building up barriers. So... If you have this unforgiveness going on you, and somebody does something that reminds you just a little bit of that, it brings up those feelings of betrayal, of hurt, you, a lot of times you'll either start a fight with them, it's the fight or flight method, you know, or you could just run away and you're just done with the re friendship and relationship. You ever, a lot of people will go through something traumatic and they'll lose somebody close to them and they'll never love or they'll never trust again and, and so nobody ever gets close to them because every time that they start to feel attachments are close that they'll just run or they'll put up barriers and a lot of uh and we'll talk about this during a relationship or a, like a, a sex series or something that we do later on um so if you're new with us yes guys we do talk about sex frequently around here and so stick it out it's awesome and uh but what you, you see a lot of the times between husbands and wives, there's very real barriers that go up because of past hurts. 
And, you know, oftentimes that translates into unhealthy bedroom stuff and unhealthy interactions, period, in your life. And so uh, this is a very real disease that can, that can get you. Um, one thing about bitter people is that uh, healthy people who are, aren't bitter um, will, healthy people won't hang around bitter people for long. It's, they just won't. They realize that they're, if they're healthy, they, they have a desire to stay healthy. If you come walking up to me with the flu, I'll pray for you from a distance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to get all in your personal snot bubble. And, <laughs> and uh, because you could infect me. It's crazy. Say, well, that's not a very good like thing. You know, try that with somebody with Ebola, all right? You know, it's like, <laughs> you're not going not gonna to happen. And healthy people that, that's spiritually healthy and relationally healthy, they don't want to hang around bitter people for long. Um, if you're bitter, only codependent people will, will be drawn to you. Um, and this is a hard thing in, in life because a lot of people are right now taking inventory in their, of their life relationally right now. You're saying, oh, crap. Um, codependent people will be drawn to you. See, what codependent people will do, they'll wallow with you. And the, while they're wallowing with you, they'll, they'll, they'll never miss an opportunity to throw fuel onto your fire. And they keep it burning and raging. And, and basically what they do in the, the short of the long is they justify your sin in your life. And it's crazy. So the, the second thing, if you're taking notes, is, is this. The degree to which I forgive is meant to reflect the degree to which I've been forgiven. The degree to which I forgive other people is meant to reflect the degree to which I have been forgiven. It's a very sobering thought, I think. Um, because I, just talking about myself here for a second, um, I've been forgiven of so much. You know, if they were rewriting this story, if Jesus was telling a parable about me, it'd be not millions, but billions of dollars. <laughs> and uh, crazy. And, and so the way that I interact with other people it, it, and forgive them, it should be a reflection. It's meant to be a reflection of how much I've been forgiven. And so I have to look in the mirror on this one. Last week we talked about grabbing the mirror before we do the magnifying glass. And I don't really like what I see in the mirror all the time with me. I'm just going, ah. I mean, I grasp the concept that, Jesus, thank you. But you know, I don't know if this other person deserves it so much. Um, verse 32 through 35 it says the, the after the, you remember the people freaked out and they saw him and they so they went and told the king and it says then the king called the man that he had forgiven and said you evil servant the king's tone changed i forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as i had mercy on you now notice this it says then the angry king Oh, you done made the king mad. Sent the man to prison to be tortured until he'd paid his entire debt. Sounds crazy. But then Jesus drops this bombshell. He says, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. I said, whoa, I have Jesus, hold up, man. I mean, I've got the WWJD bracelet, and I'm not sure that's what you would do. like that. Isn't it funny how we'll, we'll, we're more interested in listening to our codependent friends than we are listening to Jesus? Because all we really, our desire in life is to be justified in the sin that we're in. That desire is something that we have to consciously push down nonstop because it creeps up. It's, it's crazy to say, well, I don't like that. I'll say it for you. I don't like the story. What Jesus, what? God's like that? He sounds mean. Well, 
listen, I want you to understand something. The character of God, he's, he's gracious and he's merciful and he's, he's loving. But make no mistake, he's very just. And he hates sin and he can't look upon sin. Um, he just hates it. And remember what I said earlier, there, there's a payment for everything. You have to pay the piper at some point. And we owe this debt that, as sinners, we can't possibly pay. And so the price that was paid for us is Jesus, and that, that blood was the most extremely high price of anything that we've ever, I mean, you know, I may love you, but I am not going to let one of my sons die for you, ever. Not happening. And so, knowing this... Um, I think what Jesus is trying to say here is like every time that you choose to, un- to not forgive somebody that sinned against you, you're making a mockery of the blood of Christ. That's scary. Number three, you see, unforgiveness, it disables our ability to pursue the heart of God. It literally disables our ability to pursue the heart of God. You say, well, that sounds a little strong. But if you go back to verse 28, it it says that this man went out to his fellow servant and he grabbed the dude by the throat. Because a lot of times we'll, we like to lie to ourselves and other people and we like to say things like, oh, I'm just going to this brother or sister to get their attention, to get them to snap out of it, to get them to realize that what they've done to me is wrong. That's not true. When we go to them, we, we're literally trying to choke the life out of them. When we harbor unforgiveness, and uh, we're not trying to talk sense into them. We're trying to kill them. And whenever that happens, we're in a very dangerous spot, you know. Um, I'm, not, I'm not up here trying to pretend to be perfect at all or anything like I have the answer I believe Jesus does we just don't like his answer sometimes do we and and so I'm not sitting here saying at all that you can't be angry oh be angry some of you 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 need to find a righteous anger and let it let it burn inside of you that's it some of you need to get pissed that's the only way you're ever going to do anything in this life There's some very real injustices going on out there. I cannot stand a woman being abused by a man. I burn with anger towards that. You know, I kind of, you know, in retrospect, I look at it and it goes, well, it's probably because I didn't always treat women right. But, uh, There's some real injustices that take place in life, and and God allows you to become righteously angry about certain things, so you'll do something about it. Um, It's scary right now. Is is you can be justified in your anger. I don't want to hear. I don't want you to hear that any different. You can definitely be justified in your anger, but the deal is, you got to be careful not to let your anger turn into bitterness. And let me tell you something. That happens fast. You. When it comes between, down between forgiveness and bitterness, you do not have to choose bitterness. Bitterness will be your default state. You have got to consciously choose forgiveness. You don't have to choose bitterness. That'll happen all by itself, and it happens very quickly. And it contaminates you, and it, it freaks everybody else out around you, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27 says, and don't, and don't sin by letting anger control you. It says, don't sin, it doesn't say, don't sin by never get angry. It says, don't sin by letting anger control you, because anger can control you. 
So don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. I, I don't know about you, but I don't need the devil having any footholds in my life. I don't need to just go around handing him things. Here, like, check this one out, Satan. I think you should stay away, but I'm going to give you something to hang on to. It's crazy. Uh, skip down to verse 31 32. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted. Tender-hearted is something that, that we don't grasp well. Because you've got two types of people in this life. You've got people who are either thick-skinned and tender-hearted, or you've got people with thick hearts and tender skin. Let me tell you something. You, you need to be people with tender hearts and thick skin, because life's going to happen to you, and you just need to let it roll off of you. We are just visitors here anyways, people. Heaven is our home. We just need to go. But instead, a lot of times, is, is we'll get thick and hard hearts. The Bible says, be tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. How do you forgive one another? Just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Let me explain this for a second. I know I'm out of time. Keep your attention for another minute or two. It says, Forgive other people just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So I want to put this picture in your mind. So, so we're here. And God the Father is up here. He's our king, our righteous judge, our everything. And it says that he, he forgives us through Christ. And so whenever God looks down on us, see, God can't look upon sin. He hates it. Can't stand it. So when God looks at us, he looks through Christ, and not just through Christ. It's, it's how we're forgiving. Whenever, the only way that we're forgiven is through the blood of the perfect lamb who was sacrificed on a cross. And so it's Jesus' blood shed on Calvary that whenever we accept that substitutionary atonement for the forgiveness of our sins, that God takes Jesus' blood and applies it as a covering over our lives. And whenever God looks to us, he has to look through the blood of his son. And so he doesn't see you without he doesn't, God doesn't see you unfiltered. Because we live our lives so unfiltered sometimes. It's ugly. God sees us filtered through the blood of Christ. And so he sees the best in us. He wants the best for us. We, uh, we have to remember Jesus says that the way that we forgive other people is the way that God has forgiven us through Christ. And so, man, every time that we think that we can't forgive somebody else, we just need to think about, what the, who the heck are we? What have we done? And it is nuts whenever we do that, we... Let me tell you something. It's just, if you would spend, if we would consciously spend time reflecting on the goodness of God in our lives. We would treat other people differently. I mean, I've said this in relationship series before to where, like, I, I believe it's impossible. It's impossible for you to spend time alone with God in prayer and reading the Bible and then go directly and watch porn. It's impossible to spend time with prayer, with God and reading his word and immediately leave there and go out and beat your wife. Just as I say those things are impossible, I say that it's impossible to reflect on the goodness of God in your life and the forgiveness that we're not deserving of. If we'll reflect on that, it's impossible not to forgive other people. Uh, 
Number four, just so you can fill in on your notes, is forgiveness is based on willingness, not ability. Forgiveness is solely based on your willingness and not your ability. Oh, you have, everybody has the ability. It's just based on your willingness. And that is, a, is due, if you're unwilling to forgive, it's due to a hardened, thick heart. And I want to talk to you just real quickly. I didn't know this was a, a medical condition. There's a medical condition out there called hyper, hypertrophic, hypertrophic, something, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Big word. It literally means this, is that the walls of your heart become thick. And uh, they said that the leading cause of this is, is genetics and stuff, but there's a, a group of professionals out there that they, they've seen it happen that persistent bitterness can contribute to this medical condition. That it, they've seen in people that are consistently bitter, that have been wronged in their life and they have this unwillingness to forgive other people. You can read about it that it can literally thicken the walls of your heart. And this medical condition is the number one, it's the leading cause of sudden cardiac arrest in people under the age of 30. The people that drop dead of heart attacks before the age of 30, this is the number one contributor to this. And it can literally be caused by our persistent bitterness, our unwilling it can thicken the hearts. It can literally make us hard-hearted. I think that's just profound. In this. It makes me think that maybe the Bible knew what it was talking about. That this can kill you. Because anger can give way to bitterness. Bitterness is, is sin, and, and sin can give, it, it leads to death. And so we have this, uh, this virus within us, this anger, and anger and this bitterness. The antivirus, is has, it, it's got to be forgiveness. And that's, that's just a, a willingness on your part. Are, are we willing? Are we willing? Because I, I understand the arguments, guys. Well, you don't understand what this person has done to me. You're right, I don't understand, but it, you, that argument will not hold water in, in, as we're standing before the throne of God. So we can either fix it now or we have to pay for it later. And it's crazy, like, Jesus is a lot of things in my life, and I know one thing that he's not is a liar. And so we've got we to read the word of God and go, oh, dang, crap, sucks, yes, I know, i got to make a few phone calls whenever I leave this place is what some people are thinking, or I need to write a letter or whatever. And it's not saying go back and be best friends and let people use you as a doormat. Absolutely not. But this bitterness is not, it's controlling you, and it's impacting everybody else around you. And you've got to combat that with forgiveness. Let me pray for you.